Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing a new project on just Django.com which is this Django news scraper and in this project we basically set up a site for scraping tutorial websites like dev.to or medium and write up a little bit of code to scrape the titles of new tutorials that have been posted and so we're using technologies like Celery and Redis and have actually deployed this project to get a real full stack experience from scratch to finished product. So this is what it looks like at the end. It's nothing too gorgeous. I mean, it's just bootstrap, but at the end of the day, it's actually a really good project for beginners who haven't worked with multiple technologies and haven't deployed something really non-trivial. And so in this video, I'm just gonna briefly go over why you would want to build a project like this and the skills that you would gain by doing it. So for a while I've been working with Celery and I find that it's a good tool that separates beginner Django developers from slightly more experienced Django developers because not because configuring Celery is difficult. I mean the docs are pretty straightforward and you can set it up in about 15 to 20 minutes but mainly because the deployment process and just general configuration of the two together can sometimes be a little bit challenging for beginners. And just having an extra technology that you have to work with in your Django project can already start giving you an edge because as much as working with Django is great, at some point you're going to have to use other technologies to perform some sort of functionality. Now in this course slash project, what we've got here is a list of articles that have been scraped from a site dev.to. And this is basically just a community where people write up articles and most of them I would say are tutorials. And so what we do is we scrape all of the Django related articles. So we search here for Django and you'll get a whole lot of articles that pop up. And all we want is just to extract the title, the link, and just to perform a little bit of logic on the date that this article was written. So there's already a little bit of web scraping involved which is a different aspect of development. It's not really web development, it's its own skill. And adding that into a Django project already separates it from normal projects because there's a little bit of added complexity. Now in this case, if I refresh the page, you can see that there's a brief loading period where there are no articles. So if you're using something like Beautiful Soup, then it's not gonna work because if you're sending a request to get the HTML and then you get that response back and you pass it through Beautiful Soup, the data is still being fetched when the page is loaded. So all you're gonna get back is an empty div with no data in it, which is then when you need to start looking at other alternatives to scrape such as Selenium. Now Selenium is a really good tool for simulating what goes on in the browser. And in this case, is really good because the data is loaded after the page is rendered. So something like Selenium is a really good tool because we can tell it to wait for the data to be loaded before we scrape. And that's exactly what we do. We wait for it, we scrape all this data, and then we create on our side the equivalent of a news item or just a tutorial item model and save that data to the database. Now, this process of scraping this data can take some time. If, if it loads for about 10 seconds, that's already a 10 second wait. But we all know that web scraping is a slightly intense process. You don't want to have a page loading for 30 seconds and risk timeout errors. So we outsource it to an asynchronous worker and that's where something like Celery comes in. So that's what we do. We introduce Celery and we set up these tasks to scrape asynchronously. Now. In this project, we've set up Celery and we're using a scheduled worker or scheduled task to scrape the website on a consistent basis, let's say every two minutes or every half an hour. So it calls the scrape function and inside here we set up a Selenium browser, in this case using Chrome. And if we get a response after the loading period has finished, then we start passing those articles saving them to the database and just for our own analysis save a model saying that the record was finished and at what time it started and at what time it finished and that gives us a little bit of a summary scrape history where we can then see 
all the scrapes that have occurred. So at this point, we already have a couple technologies. We've got Selenium, a Django project. We've got Celery. And of course, we need some sort of broker to handle that. So we're using Redis in this case. But the real challenging part of this comes in when we need to deploy this because it's all fine and well to scrape from your own computer. But how do we get this deployed? So with a little bit of research, you can actually find a Docker file for Python and Selenium. So if I search for Python Selenium Docker, then one of the first results here is a GitHub repository. And it's this Docker Python Chrome driver. And in here, there's a ton of references to different Docker files based on for whichever configuration you need. So in our case, we just want Python and Selenium. And all of these have Google Chrome and Chrome driver by default. So if I go to this one, then this Docker file going from Python 3.8 installs Google Chrome, installs Chrome driver for us. And then the rest is just installing Selenium. But this is where our Django project would take over. And so now again, you introduce another technology, Docker. If you have no experience with it, I wouldn't say that's a, a train smash. It's relatively simple to understand. If you just watch one or two YouTube tutorials, you'll get the gist of how Docker works. And essentially all of these lines are just doing something. They're running commands, downloading something, setting something up. So that's what this is doing for us. And it's actually quite short, just all we needed to do is install Google and Chrome driver. And once we have that, then we can point the Chrome driver to use the installed one. So if I just go to the scraper, then all we do is just set the executable path to the Chrome driver that was installed in the USR local bin directory. You can add whatever additional arguments you want, configure the Docker file for it to be deployed. So something like this, where at the end, all we do is just install the requirements of the project and then run our Django server. And turns out this actually works really, really well. So we deployed this on a DigitalOcean droplet using an open source platform as a service called Caprova. And I'm a huge fan of this because it allows you to deploy your projects at the cost of the server that you are renting. So in the case of DigitalOcean, you can deploy your Postgres database your Redis server, Celery Worker, and your Django project for just $5 a month, which is insane. And that's all thanks to Caprova, which essentially gives you a really easy way of deploying multiple apps in the same sort of way as what Heroku does. And so putting all of this stuff together, you really have a great full stack developer learning experience because you've got to integrate so many technologies together, even though you're not going really in depth into each one, sometimes that's all that's required. And if you can get a little bit of experience using different technologies here and there, it's gonna help a lot in the long run. So that's what we cover in this course, deploying on DigitalOcean, setting up a Postgres database, setting up a Redis server, setting up your Celery worker with a scheduler as well. And of course, having the Django project to combine all of those together. So if you want to, so if this sounds like something that you would want to learn, then head over to learn.justdjango.com where you can find this course and 35 hours of other Django course material. And so thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the site.